What we're going to do is uh, a, a variety of experiments to explore finding out why. We've got two tables of students in the middle school range, and we're going to keep the teachers here at a table of their own. But basically, we're all students when it comes to finding out why, because we're curious about the world around us. And the only way to find that out is to work together to answer our questions. We'll start with this. What is this? That's a diaper, sure enough. In fact, it's a disposable diaper, a highly sophisticated uh, example of material science in action. Now, if I hold up a disposable diaper and ask you, what should it do for us? What kind of functions does a disposable diaper accomplish? Absorb. It absorbs. Very good, Andy. Uh, what else does it do? It stays on. It stays on. Thanks, Antolia. It stays on. And how does it stay on? A strap by straps or these little goodies perhaps, yeah. What else does it do for us? It makes us, it makes us feel comfortable then. Makes us feel comfortable. Of course, I'm not sure how comfortable you or I would feel in it today, <laughs> but, but if we're a baby and we're wearing a diaper, we want the baby to feel comfortable, don't we, okay? Well, those are just a few of the important functions, and we're gonna spend some time listing more of those functions. And basically what we're setting up on this piece of paper now is we're setting up a matching game. We're going to have a variety of functions that are important to us in disposable diapers, but we're also going to have various materials that we identify that match those particular functions. So what I'd like you to do first, before I hand out the diapers for dissection, is I'd like you to just brainstorm for a while at your table with lots of ideas from each of you on what are more of the functions of a disposable diaper. Well, feel free to continue with that list and develop more functions if you wish, but I'm going to give you each a disposable diaper now. And your task is to use the tools that you have at your table there to conduct your diaper dissection. No, let's do it. Poke it in. Poke that's it in. what I was going to do. You're just going to poke it? Yeah, that's it's fair. Like that foamy stuff. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. What's that? The foam. That stuff. But it's, you know, it's like the stuff on, what do we call it? <laughs> kind of like packing material, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just filled with cotton. cotton inside. Just yeah? Cotton well, to well, let's cotton. get in there and find yeah, out. Huh? Mm. Now, don't eat it. <laughs> Some of you are discovering now that you've opened up your diapers that uh, there's a variety of materials in there, obviously, so you want to be careful and sort of analyze layer by layer, but you're also discovering that there's a powdery material in there. A couple points of caution. You don't want to taste the powder, and you don't want to get a whole bunch of it and blow it up into your eyes either, so you want to be very careful to, if you are getting that powder to just collect it and keep track of it. And, uh, and try to keep it out of your eyes or your mouth. These, this table here has collected quite a bit of that white powder now, and uh, I asked them what would be a good experiment to do to find out more about that powder. And Amanda suggested that we get some water. It's like jello. It is like jello. It's like jello. It's like jello. Why don't you write a few of these materials down on your list so that we're sure to have a few to talk about? And in a moment, we'll go over these lists and discuss which materials meet which functions. We started with a list of various functions that we thought were important for a disposable diaper. And this is really why I like working with a material such as disposable diapers to find out why. This is a material that most of us are familiar with in its larger form, the diaper itself. But rarely have we sat around and dissected one and looked more closely. And sure enough, as soon as we do so, we find out some things that we didn't know about. We find out why, and we find out how, and we find out what. Think about from the outside going in first, okay? So if you go in from the outside, you go through that plastic layer, you quickly come up against the cottony layer that Brittany was talking about. Now I'll go to the inside and approach that cotton from the other direction. What'd you find? Were there more materials in this diaper than you were expecting? Yes. yes. You just kind of thought it was a wad of cloth or something, right? This is a fascinating example of material science. And material science is an area that we don't often get a chance to explore much in our classroom settings. But it's really a fascinating area of science. A little bit of physics, a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of engineering. And out of it comes products like this. Let's talk about that powder. Hmm. Christian, you were one of the first people to discover this powder. Where was it located? It was in like the very bottom on the bottom sheet. So before you add the water 
Somebody described it as feeling like... A crys like crystals. Like crystals or sugar. I heard somebody say grits. Okay, so when you added the water to the crystals, the crystals actually got bigger. And if you added a whole bunch of water, you got a big blob of this jello-like material. What was the term you used? Jello-ish. Mm -hmm. new, new scientific term, jello-ish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what makes it unusual is you can't squeeze the water back out. So even if the baby were to sit down, then the water is still trapped, or the moisture is still trapped within that chemical. Did you try to squeeze it out? Christian's doing it right now. As soon as you said it, he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> and that's how we find out why. Quickly, let's talk about disposability. Because this is an important thing about disposable diapers. Here's the real issue with disposable diapers in landfills here in our country. We've spent millions of dollars creating really fancy sewage treatment plants, haven't we? So that we can flush our toilets and have the sewage taken somewhere and treated and improved to the point where the water is put right back into the water system and it's clean. What have we just done by sending this to the landfill? We've just avoided the entire sewage treatment process, haven't we? We've sent raw sewage to a landfill.